Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I showed you guys that I got a bunch of new art supplies, including black paper. But sometimes when you see cool new art supplies in the store, you might feel a little bit intimidated because on one hand, you have never actually used it before. And on the other hand, you have no idea what you can actually do with it. And that's why I'm here to help. I personally think that black paper is so underrated and that's why I wanted to show you guys a few fun ideas that you can try out on black paper so you can get a little bit familiar with that and then you can come up with your own awesome ideas. Now there are different brands selling black paper. I will be using the black book by Hannemühle because it has rather thick and smooth paper but you can use any other brand that is available to you. As always, I will link all the art supplies I will be using in this video in the description box down below, so don't forget to check it out. Now, the first idea is very simple and it's something we probably all have done at some point in our lives or still do from time to time. And that's creating mandalas, dot art inspired by the Aborigines or a mixture of both. I know there are 5 million ways how to pronounce mandala, but let's not focus on that in this video. Now the reason why I think creating this type of art on black paper is awesome is because you can use really bold colors that really stand out on the paper. Usually you would use white paper, divide the sections, create beautiful patterns and then you would color them in with color pencils, markers or watercolors or something completely else. But here I actually used my Posca pens which work great on dark surface. Now you might need to test out some colors because some of them might be just too dark but a lot of them are super vibrant, bright and very covering. So for my design I incorporated elements of the mandala and also the dot art and used a limited color palette. So I used gold, green, white color pens and tried to make everything look really balanced. If you want you can of course plan out your design first. You can either do that on a simple piece of paper or if you have a tablet such as an iPad and have the program called Procreate or any other app that can create these types of designs, you can easily plan it out if you want, adjust everything and see what design you like. And that's what I actually did. I used Procreate on my iPad and designed everything before I actually transferred that onto the black paper. And sometimes I accidentally created interesting lines that I didn't plan out by touching something by accident and I actually really liked it in the end. Now if you're completely new to drawing a mandala, I actually have a video about that where I show you step by step how to create your own design. So I will have the link in the description box down below so you can check it out. Another idea what you can do is using metallic watercolors that really stand out and shine on this type of background. To show you guys a very simple idea what you can paint, I used my Colero metallic watercolors and painted some flowers. First I taped down the paper to create a frame and then I painted one rose at a time. Again, I have a whole video about how to create those flowers super easily so you can check it out, the link will be in the description box down below. Here I used different pinks, purples, greens and even added a little bit of gold dots here and there. And not only the black paper but also the black frame around it makes the design look so fancy in my opinion. Now besides using the black paper as just background, you can also use the black paper as part of your painting. Another color that stands out on black paper is white and that's why I wanted to use a white charcoal pen for this idea. I'm quite new to this medium so I wanted to play around with something more simple so I looked up for some silhouettes with shadows and light and found various cool ideas and decided to paint a mug with hot coffee or tea in it because I love me some coffee and green tea. So here I used a white charcoal pan and lightly sketched out the mug while focusing only on the outlines first. And because here we have two light sources, one on the left and one on the right, I lightly went over the left and right side of the mug to add the light. The very center will stay black as here the mug doesn't get any light. I also felt like it was easier to slowly build up the highlights so I created a very light white layer of charcoal and blended it out so later I can add even more white charcoal on top to intensify the light. And because there's something hot in the mug, I added some steam above it. Here I first sketched out a very scribbly line starting just really small and then made it bigger and bigger to the top making the amount of steam even more intense on top. Again I focused on the left and right side of the lines and made them slightly thicker and more intense in a few areas. 
If you need some inspiration, you can always Google the terms steam and mug to get an idea where to add more light and where to keep the dark areas on the paper. Once I had the general outlines and highlights, I went back with a white Posca pen and added a few very bright highlights to a few areas where the light hits the most. But you can also just use the white charcoal and press more firmly. But black paper is also great for painting the fascinating nature of soap bubbles in their beautiful colors. Now it might look a little bit intimidating, but if you just focus on one line at a time, don't rush anything and just paint one step at a time, you will see that it's not that difficult. So here I first created circles in different sizes using a pencil and different round shapes for the outlines. And then I went ahead and slowly started to build up one bubble at a time. I started out with creating a few very bright light reflections on the left and right side of the bubbles using silver metallic watercolors. Very minimal just to get some idea and feel for the light. Don't worry if you don't have metallic watercolors, you can also use colored pencils, Posca pens, markers or even charcoal. Whatever is available to you that you like to use and that is visible on black paper. And then what you want to do is you want to add different colors that you can see in a soap bubble such as blue, green and purple. And depending on the surrounding and the thickness of the bubble, you will see different colors. For this exercise, I mostly used yellow, blue, purple and green. Again, I would recommend to look for soap bubbles on Google to have some reference to work with. Don't feel bad for using reference pictures because sometimes you simply don't know how certain things look like. The important thing here is to follow the shape of the bubble. So here I added a little bit of blue to the lower right side of the bubble along the outline and then a little bit of this magenta violet color to the upper left side but here I created bigger shapes next to the outline while following the curve of the bubble. As you can see the shapes are slightly curved not straight. Here again I left out some space in between the outline and the magenta color. And then I added more of those colors to the left and right side. If you use a reference picture, pay close attention to all the colors and where exactly they are on the bubble. So for example, if you see purple reflections, pay attention only to those at first and add them to the paper and then you can move on to another color. I think this way you won't feel lost where to place which color to make it look like a soap bubble. To intensify the reflections, I used a silver metallic color again and applied it to the violet color right in the lower corner on the right side of the bubble and then I just added two small dots in between. Now all soap bubbles are different so I just want to show you guys the process of building up the object step by step so you can use any reference you like to practice it. The fun part of painting bubbles is that it's all about adding curved lines in different colors while keeping a little bit of black areas in between. So as long as you follow the round shape of the bubble, keep a lot of black space, just a few colored lines here and there will make a simple circle look like a beautiful soap bubble. Iridescent or interference metallic watercolors look absolutely beautiful on black paper because they reflect the light so beautifully but as I said earlier, this works with any other medium, it just might not be super vibrant or won't reflect the light. I also found a ton of amazing ideas on Instagram by various different artists. I will link them all in the description box down below, so go check them out and show them some love. But they're just incredible. This artist, for example, she created this bulb just by using Prisma colors. Also, there are these flowers with pastel and this goldfish and this it's just... I can even. I think it's such a great idea and as you can see black paper is so underrated. You can create such beautiful artworks. So um, I would highly recommend to test it out. For more ideas what you can paint you can check out the videos right here. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. I upload new videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!